Scavengers like this badger eat wild bird eggs. Normally, grouse shooter George Windali is able to shoot and trap some scavengers, such as corvids and gulls, but not this year and not last year. He blames British bureaucracy. We have not been given licenses to control the crows and magpies and gulls uh, uh, on SSSI moorland and this is the second year running that they've not got the licenses out in time for the critical bird nesting period um, in, in the spring. Um, Natural England have known for uh, over a year uh, that they're going to have the same number of applications this year as they had last and this is unacceptable. I don't understand why uh, the curlew and other red listed species on the moors have to suffer uh, because of, of their uh, inefficiency and ineptness. We can't do the predator control on grouse moors to save the eggs and save the chicks. They, they, will not, uh, they, they too will go the way of the curlews and the rest of the country. This problem is, being, is not being caused by climate change, it's not being caused by land intensification, it's not being caused uh, by um, uh, changes in, in land cover or, 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 or anything of that nature. This is caused entirely by the government's own nature conservation laws and their ineptness in delivering them. We've had quite a busy year. The anti-shooting group Wild Justice, run by BBC presenter Chris Packham, forced Natural England to rescind the general licences on or near SPAs such as Spawnton in 2019, effectively banning pest control on about 10% of the UK. Spawnton is a long way from Natural England's comfortable London offices. George is worried his beloved moor is now a snack bar for magpies and gulls. Wild Justice don't like the idea that grouse moors are actually the stronghold of um, species like curlew and lapwing um, and that they are actually where we are going to end up with a surplus breeding population if we're allowed to uh, continue to do the management as we have done for uh, many decades. And that sticks in their gullet, they find that very uncomfortable uh, and they can't accept it and, they, and uh, this is a means of attacking it to make it more difficult and less successful um, and so they can then hopefully turn around and say uh, that uh, they don't need us. Uh, well, actually they do, and those birds particularly need us, um, e even if the people in Wild Justice don't. Wild Justice says grass shooters are the problem, not the solution. They say grass moor is typically a wildlife desert, except there's this, a curlew, and these, lapwings, and this, a kestrel. Spawnton Moor, on the North York Moors is teeming with wildlife. Located on the southern edge near Huttonley Hole, the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust calls it a mecca for bird watchers. That is a green plover, or peewit, or lapwing, or um, you come from Middlesbrough, so you might, in Cleveland, you might recognise it as a tearfid. I believe it's got something like 34 different names. George leads a team of conservationists on Spawnton. He is kind enough to take me out for a birding twitch. All the species are recovering from historic lows uh, and we are seeing uh, an expansion both in the number of um, breeding pairs, um, uh, birds that you just see around in winter etc and the extent of their range. Everything is expanding and getting much greater. Cock grouse got very very pronounced wattle and Little, and a little bit darker they go this, this time of year as the hens go slightly lighter. Um, Meadow Pipit, striking off for you. So just from this one spot in whatever we've had, five minutes we've been here or something, so a pair, a pair of grouse, curly, green plover, Meadow Pipit, kestrel. All the species of raptor in the UK are, are improving and recovering. Um, uh, and many of them have now got to um, population levels that have never previously been recorded um, in, in history. Um, you know, they, they've, they've, they've completely achieved it and, and, and more besides. It has taken a lot of hard work to get the moor into the state it is today. This was all solid, solid bracken on, on, on here. Everything in front of us, all the way down this valley, all that bankside, all on top of that hill, all 
between the two backs um, and as far as you can see it was solid solid bracken and we've got rid of it and brought it back to heather and these other natural mixes like um, bog myrtle there. Now George and his team are focusing on keeping the moors moist by building leaky dams like this one made from local rocks and creating pools further down the hill. This little watercourse here planted a few extra trees to um, as well uh, keep the stock out of it and and then creating little dams like this here um, and we've got and further ones up and further ones downstream all to sort of slow the flow the idea is to have lots of them and the cumulative effect so that would reduce um, flooding impact further downstream and and uh, improve the quality of the rivers by keeping the sediment out of the river and keeping it back up on at the moors where it's come from i think we can do much more things to keep more water on the moors for longer which will help the biodiversity and all the um, wildlife up here as well as um, sheep and, and, and things like that and provide a source of um, uh, water for wildfire fighting in, in, in if the worst ever happens and we have to tackle one of those you know which could destroy everything up here the most important thing is that this heather um, ha has to be managed if it, if it, if it it's a huge fuel load the fire brigades absolutely understand uh, the importance of managing the fuel load um, uh, and that if they um, are called out to a very serious summer fire it's because there hasn't been enough prescribed burning and cutting done um, to break up that fuel load reduce uh, the, the the problem as a part of that debate there is um, a threat to to remove the, the the ability to to burn and manage these heather moorlands um, it, it, or some aspects of it in some ways so two you've got two um peewits flying around there too. There we go, that's very distinctive lapwing behaviour. One of the great, uh, uh, um, many great public benefits that come on the back of, of driven grouse moor management is, is the fact we create this wonderful open landscape which um, uh, is all open access. Um, and, uh, but in, in addition, it has a network of public rights of way and linear permissive paths and bridleways um, over it. And, and I don't think people recognise that enough. Two geese just flown over the top. Yeah, I got those. Yeah. 